Alright, so I'm here with another episode of Ranthamania. I know I haven't done one of these in a while. And, I, and you know, I, I was thinking, oh, I, I should just stop this, you know. Um, like I, I think I told myself a month ago, that a month ago. I don't know if I said that on one of my videos, but I was like, eh, you know, I don't really want to do these anymore. But I figured I would do one now. Um, since I got, there's a lot of stuff that's uh, making me mad in this, and, and instead of making like six individual or five or six individual videos, I figure I might as well just compact it into one. So uh, yeah, I'll, I, I'll probably be doing a rant of mania every once in a while when I got a lot of shit I want to talk about. So um, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, CM Punk's ex-girlfriend. Um, the, 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 the title on sescoops.com is CM Punk's ex-girlfriend says he's retired and she fears for his safety. So I'm going to go through this article here and it's a bunch of bullshit here by, uh, her name is Natalie Slater, CM Punk's ex-girlfriend, close friend. She says, my friend can't go to Target. He can't go to Great America, the grocery store, or any mall anywhere. It's been a long time since I've seen him escape a restaurant without getting Instagrammed by diners at nearby tables. People mob him in the airport and tweet angrily when he doesn't stop to sign autographs because he has to catch. Uh, he has a flight to catch. My friend is famous and it sucks. Now he's recently retired, seven-time world champion. He's one of the most isolated people I've ever known. A few weeks ago, he found a young fan and his mom cramped cramming Easter candy into the mail slot of his front door. Just before that, he walked out of his back door to throw out the trash, only to be met by fans camped out in his alley for hours just to see him. We get mad about how much of our information Facebook is selling to advertisers, and this guy has people stalking his dumpster. But if he complains, people roll their eyes and say, if they had the money, they wouldn't complain about anything. The money. I'm sure he... I'm sure he likes it just fine, but I have to wonder how much of it he would trade to be able to go to a Cubs game without it, without it ending up on TMZ. The nervous ninny in me lives with the constant fear that somebody is going to stab him on the rare occasion. I can't get him out of the house to get to witness how overbearing and creepy people are toward him. Bodyguard, my husband and I nag. That's stupid, he says. What am I going to do, drag some guy around with, with me forever? Why can't people just leave me alone? So obviously this Natalie person is upset. Because people are, you know, uh, just, uh, you, you know, nagging CM Punk, I guess, in her words, you know. But this is the consequences that you get when you just shut the fuck up. You know, CM Punk just shut the fuck up after he fucking left. He didn't say a word. And this is what you're going to get if you go out in public. Since he just went silent. That's not the fucking answer when you do something like this. You know, I, I've said this in the past. WWE and CM Punk need to talk about this, not uh, not say anything about it. I mean, it's ridiculous. If you're going to do this, you know, make an explanation so we can understand. Don't just go to your house and do nothing. I mean, CM Punk wants, you know, uh, to, to nobody knows he's, a, you know, around. He doesn't want anybody to fucking bother him or whatever. You know, I, he's gotten mad at the fans before. But if you're going to be in the WWE, you're going to be fucking famous. And people are going to be fucking bothering you for shit. And the, the answer is not to fucking, uh, you know, ignore them and piss them off. You know, John Cena, you know, as much as he's not that talented, respects the fans. He never gets fucking angry at the fans. And, you know, WWE doesn't want some guy like CM Punk who gets pissed off all the time as the face of their company. It's just the facts. So when this Natalie person says that she's complaining about the fans, you know, CM Punk's at fall here too, you know, what do you fucking expect, you're just gonna go fucking silent for months on end, and you don't expect people to try to take photographs or, you know, see you, I mean, yeah, some of these people are a little, you know, crazy putting candy in the door or whatever, and camping out the alley, but that's what you're gonna get if you do this shit. I mean, it's CM Punk's fault. So, you know, this person blaming the fans is wrong, pretty much, in my opinion. Next thing I want to talk about here is Batista. Um, so, Batista's uh, mad now that he's uh, <laughs> fucking, uh, you know, being jobbed out to Daniel Bryan and shit. And he's not happy with the place he's in the company. I, you know, I talked about this a little bit before in one of my videos. Uh, the one where I said Batista's a bitch. Um, and now he's mad, you know, he's, cause, you, you know, I don't fucking know, he's not fucking champion when he clear, clearly doesn't deserve it. 
And he's, I see him now. I saw him say, oh, fans might get tired of Brian a few months back. So he obviously doesn't like Brian because he's probably jealous of him because Brian's a thousand times better than he is. So he now he's, uh, you know, bashing fans, bashing uh, everybody, getting mad at everybody when he's a fucking problem. It's never his fault, is he? Uh, take fucking responsibility. You know, admit you're a fucking horrible wrestler. You know, but no, it's it's uh, your fault. No, it's you know he keeps blaming fucking fans and fucking you know Vince McMahon for it. And you know I give credit to Vince McMahon or Triple H, you know whoever fucking made the decision to put the the title on Brian. I I uh, give credit to that person because it it takes uh, you know for Vince McMahon it takes fucking you know a lot to. Uh, Put the belt on fucking Brian, a guy who you don't really like, you know, Brian or uh, Vince McMahon and the whole McMahon family are more, more uh, set towards the bigger bigger guys. So it takes, you know, I give McMahon credit for uh, giving the belt to Brian. But seriously, Batista's a fucking bitch. Um, next thing I want to talk about here is uh, Taker's uh, streak. I, I saw Y2J say, you know, it was the right thing to do. Um, and I think this is going to be common in the in the future where, you know, I, I think it was an initial shock when it first happened and people were so mad about it. But I think as time goes along, people are going to realize that this was a really cool moment. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's just what's going to happen. I mean, it's already starting to happen. Um, people just got to realize, you know, this is probably Taker's last match. I don't know. You know, I can't fucking confirm that. You know, only Taker knows that. Um, or maybe he doesn't even know if this is the last match or not. But he just wanted to do it because he didn't know if he would come back for next year. So he wanted to just make sure, you know, safety, you know. Because <laughs> the streak needed to end sometime. I mean, it just can't go on 27000 and all or whatever, you know. So it had to end sometime. And Brock Lesnar, not the perfect guy to end it. But probably one of the best guys to end the streak. So I don't have any complaints about it. It was a shocking moment, a great moment, and just uh, it was a unique moment. Something that you're probably not gonna, you know, ever see fucking again, you know, in uh, fucking wrestling, you know, maybe you know like a shocking moment. Like you don't see like this much of a shock, you know, that much in wrestling. I mean, holy shit, you know, when I'm talking shock, I don't talk like oh, you know, The Rock returned. You know, I'm talking about something you like expected to happen. But it didn't. Like, you're like, oh, 100% sure Undertaker's going to win. But he didn't. You know, that's what I mean by shock. Yeah, there's a lot of shocking moments. Like, The Rock returning. You know, like, you didn't really expect. Or Brock Lesnar. You didn't, you know, expect you know, uh, some shit, you know. But, I mean, I'm talking this. Where, like, something, you know, where it seems highly predictable that something's going to happen. But it doesn't. So, you, you know, a great fucking moment here. Then we get, um... And the next on the list here is a brief fucking Bella. Holy shit. Why is she fucking around Daniel Bryan? Uh, it's just retarded. I mean, you know, there's such a cute couple, guys. Oh, there's such a cute couple. You know, bullshit. Uh, you know, you, you look back at the you, the relationships, the famous relationships like Edge and Lita. You know, and Daniel Bryan and Edge, or Daniel Bryan and Lita, uh, Brie Bella are nowhere near, you know, the fucking... Uh, greatness of Lita or the the uh, TV 14 you know they were uh, you know more uh, you know how, how do I put it it's more hardcore more mature than fucking Brian and pre Bella I mean there's like a couple you know PG couple they never fucking kiss they never fucking make out I mean it's just retarded uh, so it's very, it makes Brian look retarded too, it makes him, you know, you got, you gotta drag around this fucking bitch, Brie Bella, wherever he goes now, you know, you got Kane attacking, and it's just a fucking mess, you know, they should have just kept Brie Bella in the fucking Divas division, but now you gotta fucking ruin everything, yeah, you got a great person with Brian, you know, oh, let's just stick Brie Bella on him, you know, yeah, retarded idea, get the fuck off, you know, I hope Brie Bella fucking gets choke slammed through a fucking flaming ass table and lights on fire and yeah never see her again no but you know, I'm not, you know I, I don't wish death on her or anything but no just get her off of fucking tv uh, it's retarded or off of brian not off of tv just get her the fuck away from 
uh, this, this whole feud with Kane and Daniel Bryan. It's retarded. Don't involve her in it. Next thing I want to talk about here, uh, a couple non-wrestling topics here. Uh, the, the situation in Ukraine, many people don't know that there's basically a war going on there now. You know, the, the media won't cover it. Um, but there's, there's recently 30 people killed, protesters who weren't violent. They were killed for, uh, um, in Ukraine for protesting against the government. Um, and, and they're telling us that this government's, you know, great and everything. And the last government was horrible. When it was a democratic elected government before this revolution even happened. Um, and, uh, so it's just bullshit what the media is trying to spin this as. Complete bullshit. And there's, you know, uh, helicopters being fired at, people being killed, there was a mayor that was stabbed. So there's a war going on. It's just, the question really is, when is it going to escalate? Because it's already starting, pretty much. So, uh, yeah, this is not good, <laughs> guys. I mean, people just go on talking about other things, you know, uh, you know, like sports and everything. But when the real issues in the world are this, you know, fucking Ukraine and, you know, the imminent war, pretty much. You know, I'm fucking, I hope there's no war, but I think there is going to be. I hope I'm wrong. I don't want a fucking war, guys. I don't want a fucking nuclear war and die, you know. But, uh, yeah, that's not good what's happening in Ukraine. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is this anniversary of World War II. Um, not, not so much the anniversary, but, like, I hear it's like a big celebration in Russia the day that, uh, they, they surrendered or they defeated the Allied, the Axis powers. And, yeah, you could celebrate a little bit. You know, I guess you could celebrate, oh, that's the day the war ended. But there's too many times where there's, like, a celebrations or, you know, over, over war. You know, I hear people saying, oh, we won all these wars. You know, my view on it is there's no winners in war. I don't see, a, you know, how you could say, oh, we won. I guess you could say, oh, we defeated them. But I don't see how that's a, a, a success when we lost thousands and thousands of lives. You know, I just don't see it like that. You know, it's... In, in other people die like, 50 million in World War II. You know, I, I don't see that as a good war, guys, you know. I don't see that as a success. It, you know, it's, like, I hate how war is, like, glorified now, almost. Like, war is, like, a normal thing now where people are dying, you know. It's, you know, put into video games and, you know, war is accepted now as, like... A normal thing that's always going on. It's like we're at war every fucking year now. Is America. And I don't like it, you know. And it's like celebrated and shit. Like, oh, like the D-Day. Like, oh, what a successful invasion that was. What a successful time that was. D-Day, June 6, 1943, was it? 1944, I believe. Or something like that. It was either 43 or 44. But they're like, oh, successful invasion. And a ton of people fucking died on that. So I don't really see all these, you know, things in war as celebrations. I see them as time to, uh, think of, ooh, it's raining now. It's fucking scared me. I see it as, uh, fucking, um, you know, times to commemorate the people who died. Um, next thing I'm going to talk about here is Donald, last thing, Donald Sterling. You know, there's a bunch of people, you know, that were going off about this. You know, and mad at Donald Sterling. When the real issue, you know, the media was really over this, covering it. But the real issues we gotta talk about are fucking, you know, things like Ukraine. The Ukraine situation, which could fucking wipe out the entire fucking earth. Not saying it's gonna happen, but it could. Um, I just see all over. It's too many people talking about, ooh, what's the next thing Justin Bieber is gonna do? Or Selena Gomez. I mean, it's like, come on, guys. Are we really gonna obsess over these guys? I see that there's a... There's an app for LeBron James. Are you fucking serious? I mean, can we worship, you know, like these guys are now, these pop, pop culture people and sports uh, athletes are not now like gods almost. You gotta fucking worship them. And uh, I, I, you know, the real issues, you know, should be what's happening in the world, like what's happening in Ukraine. You know, like Clive and Bundy, heroic person. That should be, that's the real fucking stories. Not what Justin Bieber is doing. Not if Justin Bieber is together with Selena Gomez for like the 10,000th time or whatever. You know, let's talk about the real issues. The real issues that are going to affect us. Not fucking Justin Bieber or whatever. So, um, yeah, th th there you go. There's your fucking rant, the mania. Um, again, 
probably some more to come in the future, but not you know not every week, just periodically. These uh, these random media videos. So uh, there you go.